and happy 4th of July. Happy belated Canada Day to you, Colin. It is the Red Leaf Retrocast. America, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Going up to save the motherfucking day, yeah. Yeah, it just worked out. July 4th is on a Sunday. Canada Day was a few days ago. This is good. Not a lot of Canada games out there, Colin, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, there's games made in Canada, but those don't really count that much. Actually, that's a good idea for next year. Made games made by games made by like Canadian studios. I think that'd be a cool little topic. Yeah, but we've talked about so many of the good ones already, like Prince of Persia, Sands of Time. Look, Ubisoft makes a lot of games, and so does EA. <laughs> Too true. Yeah. Yeah, this was Joey's topic. Uh, we switched Collins and Joey's pick around just so Joey could get this was his idea. Joey, great idea, by the way. <laughs> I mean, it is 4th of July. It is Merca Day. It so is Merca. Merca. Uh, so what, I mean, it's pretty obvious, but just for the listeners of episode 96 of the Red Leaf Retrocast, where you can find the podcast and all your favorite podcasting outlets and YouTube and the like, Joey. Why did you choose America Fuck Yeah on this 4th of July? <laughs> I mean, it's America Day. Uh, America Fuck Yeah. And why not? We get to see a lot of different America games and a lot of patriotic in different ways. So let's celebrate today. Maybe crack a beer and just say fuck yeah. Yeah, I got uh, I got morning coffee with some Baileys in it. I'm doing pretty good. Uh, went out drinking the last, last couple days. Very nice. Got some... Uh, the uh, the So there's this like... Rhode Island bar chain. And I noticed this about Rhode Island. Here's some Rhode Island facts that I, at least of my understanding, if you're from Rhode Island, feel free to correct me. <laughs> um, there's a lot of family owned restaurants in Rhode Island. You feel me so far? Does this make sense? Have you heard of this concept? Yes? No? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. How is it even possible? <laughs> okay. Well, apparently. Uh, I've I've come across this uh, numerous times in Rhode Island where they will open up a chain of their same restaurant in the state. However, be like, oh man, why would I go to the same restaurant in other places in the state? Oh, well, hold the phone. Apparently these places are designed and made to, each one's made different from the last one uh, to make each one special and unique. So... For example, there's a place called Cello's where one might be like a trivia bar place. And you go to another one, it's more of a family restaurant. So it keeps things fresh and easy. So I've been going to one of these uh, one of these places called The Thirsty Beaver, which for all I know, it could be a bigger chain. But I keep being told it's different in every location just like that. So uh, That been, means something. It sure does. It's a great name. I watched uh, Belgium uh, Disappoint Me, much like Germany. Uh, all these, uh, yeah. Every team I wanted to win in the quarters lost. So I guess it's go Denmark. I mean, they're an easy team to root for currently. Yeah, but if I root for them, they're gonna lose. Yeah, exactly. So go England. <laughs> go England. <laughs> <laughs> go the enemy. <laughs> Hell yeah! On this Fourth of July, I hope you fall. Yeah. So uh, I, I, every every Friday after work uh, for the past well since I got my vaccine. I just go there, have a different little appetizer, and I have a number of IPAs because they have a, a rolling weekly uh, tap of like six beers. I just kind of pick one and drink that for the Friday. It's very nice. It's a very good, enjoyable experience. And slowly but surely, I've noticed every Friday around the same time, more and more people are, are showing up to it. So I found that, you know, people are starting to get back out into the world. It's very nice to see. What have yeah, you been? I went to I went to my bar that I usually trivia at last night and ran to the bartender that always hooks me up. And uh, she said they're trying to get trivia back, so I can't wait to oh, yeah. play trivia every Wednesdays and have some Lone Star beer on the cheap. Oh, no. Why would you do that to your stomach? Because <laughs> it's like two or three bucks for a big ass beer. You could do a little better than Lone Star, Joey. <laughs> Uh, cheap ass beer and trivia. Oh, better. What's a better combination? You're telling me I'm gonna have to drink good beer? <laughs> Come on, get out of here. I mean, you could drink slightly more expensive beer and not give yourself gut rot. That'd be a good, a better, enjoyable experience, would it not? Nah, I've done it long enough. Lone Star won't affect me. Oh, you've trained your stomach lining. <laughs> Hell yeah, cheap beers on Wednesdays. 
Oh, God. <laughs> Have you started doing anything, uh, Colin, besides moving? And apparently that takes two months these days. Oh, I wish. I fucking wish. So that's a no. We're still pretty heavily locked down at the moment, although we're we're in stage two, and I'll be I'll be getting my second dose two Saturdays from now. Did you sign up for the uh, the super uber duber hopeful cross your fingers uh, list that's in Toronto, or are you straight up like the suburb rule? Suburb rule, pretty much. Oh, that's a bummer yeah. because uh, all my all my. All my buddies in uh, Toronto were on the super uber duper. Uh, give me the call for the second dose, and they always get called in like ten minutes after they join the list. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because huh. there's just an overstock, you know. And well, as soon as they I'll, hit that overstock, yeah, you, that might be something to look into. Because if you can, is that, the, is that the actual name of it, or <laughs> no? That's what I'm calling it because it's just a sign up list, and then they like my my a couple of my buddies were like calling it that name. Because you sign up and you <laughs> and you get your second dose immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I'm I'm booked for the seventeenth, but maybe I can get one sooner. Oh well, then but at the very least, I can get a haircut this coming Saturday. Finally. You know, that's an interesting question, Joey. Have you gotten a haircut in the last year and a half? Megan's been cutting my hair. So oh, yes. got the woman. Okay, all right. She cut my hair last weekend before I had to go into the office for two all-day meetings, Monday and Tuesday. Man, oh, that, that was so fun. fun. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, okay, I've only had one haircut, so it's probably I'm due. <laughs> last year and a half, I've had the one. That was back in February. So you know me, Joey. Got to get the 1970s boy band look going. <laughs> mm-hmm. What about you, Colin? Uh, mine keeps dropping down in front of my eyes, and it pisses me off. <laughs> He's so furious. It's because Canada Day is over, and it's all about America. I can feel his seething, Joey. <laughs> well, it causes it causes the sweat from my brow to drip into my eyes when I'm working. You gotta get one of those sweat headbands and make it like a bright neon color, like it's 1989. I already have a sweat band, and it still drips. Ah. Oh. I work in these fucking plus 30 or 30 plus temperatures. It has been quite warm, yes. Yeah. Joey, did you hear in Kuwait where they had the highest temperature recorded in 2021 and it was 52.3 Celsius? That sounds uh, quite deadly. It was like 128 Fahrenheit. Like, what the hell? Incredible. I would not want to live there or be there at any point in time. Yeah, I just think it's funny that uh, the Northwest is getting hit by what they call like a heat bubble or something like that. And it was like 10, 15 degrees hotter there than it was in Houston. So, well, it's a dry heat. (laughs) Don't give me that. Yeah, which is fine. Well, I mean, the the fascination is like when I was living in Michigan, uh, there's like zero air conditioning in most places. So if it gets to, and everything's so heavily insulated that if it's 80 degrees outside, you're, your home is just it's it's a fucking hot box so you have to just be outside and just sit in the heat yeah that's what some people i know in the northwest were saying they're like it's it's better to sit outside right now my apartment's way too hot yeah it, it just it drives me like i always forget that it's not places aren't like the south where we have ac everywhere everywhere everything's absolutely well, everywhere well yeah so you'd barely spend any time outside in the heat. You just go from one AC to the next to the next. So we know how to deal with it. Well, but those yeah, outside don't. is bad. <laughs> outside is the devil. You don't mow your lawn unless it's early in the morning or late at night. You walk your dogs late at night and you just avoid the devil's fear. <laughs> the, de- the devil's fear. Uh, okay, so funny work story. You ready for this? This is what brought it on when you mentioned work, Joey. The... Uh, I had a government inspector coming around, and I developed a procedure for blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, cut to, like, I tested all the equipment that that was going to be used in the uh, demonstrations to make sure we're meeting government standards and all this. And uh, all the chemistry went well. It was very, uh, uh, very well prepared. We get to uh, this, uh, this, this super industrial, um, uh, super RPM blade. 
and it, it's supposed to cut uh, highly condensed uh, uh, forged steel. Okay, <laughs> it's a it's a fast ass blade. It's really strong, and I go through the spiel of this is the model, this is what we're doing, this is what we're doing, and it's like okay, so I'm gonna turn this on and. Uh, slowly bring it up to the necessary RPM that we need to cut this incredibly dense metal. Can you guys guess what happened next? The blade flung off and almost hit someone. <laughs> so luckily there's a shield that you place in front of it and you got to lock it down. If you follow the proper uh, safety procedures, nothing bad will happen. At least to you, the human. Colin, do you take a, do you want to take a guess of what happened? <laughs> It embedded almost a foot into the shield. <laughs> so, you guys are kind of close. I turn it on. I bring it up from speed 2 to 3, which isn't all that fast. But it is fast enough uh, to cut you know, some metals. I turn it on, barely bring it up, and it immediately goes... Do do do, foom, and it flings forward at the shield and just crashes into it and shatters into a million pieces. So that kind of oh, gives shit. you an idea of how fast this blade goes. The woman screams. Uh, one guy screams and jumps backwards. One guy falls down, and I wish I had video because uh, this has happened to me twice before. So I just kind of jerked my head back a little bit, closed my eyes, and put my head down. And I just went call the call 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 the call maintenance. <laughs> No reaction, <laughs> and immediately I hear the uh, the government because there was a lot of government guys also on a laptop that was looking on. They start just cracking up laughing, and they make the comment, "Well, he followed safety procedures and he didn't fear death. That's a good sign." <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. I was so embarrassed. I was just trying so hard not to laugh because. No more than an hour prior to that, I had turned it on, put it up at the highest speed to fully test it, and no problem. But as soon as you turn, that's how that's that's Murphy's Law at its best. Good times. But this is America. Yeah. So what is more America than saying "fuck you, death"? How about that? <laughs> hmm. All right. I got a Persona Three update, guys. Go for it. You ready for Let's this? Let's hear it. Okay. <laughs> So I've reached just over the halfway point in Persona 3. So good success. Nice. So that's like 45 hours in the game. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's ridiculous. I re I, I beat whatever amount of bosses I'm at now. I couldn't even tell you. The point is I'm on like the fourth tier of the tower now where everything's kind of gold and shit. Uh, oh, yeah. Robot girl's doing her thing. Uh... I uh, got a, uh, a a new character, which Junpei, one of the characters, like fell in love with. She's like an artist or whatever, but she works for the enemy. Uh, there was a whole spiel about it. Uh, the boss fight was fine. And this is uh, officially my breaking point. I don't want to play this game anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah, I mean, the story's fine. The gameplay's fine. It's the overly long repetition to it all and oh, yeah, the, yeah. yeah just th this loop has just where it, it's just waned on me too too long now i've the story doesn't progress as fast as especially at this point in the game where i'm so many hours in i just feel like i'm doing the same mundane task over and over again and i'm not getting anywhere and I, if you guys recall, I felt this way last time, and I t ended up taking like a month off from the game. Uh huh. And this time, it's just the same thing over and over again. My the the lack of progression, I uh, just isn't doing it for me. Um, the and it's not even like the boss fights and the enemies are all that interesting anymore. I just feel like I'm going through motions. I'm lose I've lost all interest in progressing because I know, man, I might not encounter anything important or interesting for another three hours. So what am I doing here? Uh really gives me a new perspective on some of the some some other RPGs that I've played where it's like, why why did I never finish this? Uh and this is why. When 
when there's not enough progression or interesting areas changing up enough, uh, the uh, character progression is, especially in Persona in Persona Three here, is just way too tropey. So I feel like it's all worthless and not even worth that, worth even venturing into. I uh, getting those, um, uh, whatever they call it, the uh, social links, getting the yeah, social yeah. links all the way up. I'm not into it anymore. So I've I'm officially tapping out on Persona Three. Uh, seven months into 2021, uh, and I know I'm not going to be able to beat it before the next podcast. So, with my interest at an all time low, and uh, not enough, uh, not quick enough in pro- progression, I'm out. Game's fine, just doesn't do it for me anymore. Uh, I'm over. I'm over it. So there you go. There's uh, there's my final. Persona 3 thoughts. And when we discuss it Bad. over the next podcast, uh, I guess I'll hear you guys' thoughts. Very sad. Yep. Did not beat Thought you were going to go to the distance, but you failed me. Well, I mean, I did uh, Final Fantasy <laughs> 6 for a long-ass time, and I did beat that because progression was much more manageable. And I, 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 didn't, I, I never felt like uh, the game was taking me away from the main storyline. I could control the progression myself. Persona 3, I'm at the mercy of the game for hours too often. And I don't like that. And after 40, 40 whatever hours into it, I'm over. I'm out. <sighs> Fair enough. Yeah. So, Just don't want to feel like a game is wasting your time, I guess. No, no. And um, so that'll give me, I guess I'll go back to Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne, the HD remake. I'm definitely progressing much faster in that game. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of that's kind of I f- I find that interesting where it's a it's a game in the same universe made by the same people basically the same same company. Uh, I definitely feel a lot more progression in Nocturne than Persona Three, although it does suffer from its early two thousands ness. <laughs> that I guess I'll get into over time. But uh, yeah, Colin, Joey, have you guys been playing any games? Probably not, right? Uh, a couple. I mean, I uh, <clears throat> actually got a few games on Steam recently for sale because I got a little email from Top Hat Studios detailing a few of their newer things, and I picked up The Citadel, which is a sh- first-person shooter along similar lines to Doom and Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein, eh? Play- okay. But yeah, it's like a you you play as like this robot cyborg waifu going around killing other robot cyborg waifus, although they're all in like it's kind of funny cult <laughs> robes, so you don't really see their faces until they're in pieces, <laughs> literal pieces that is right. And I also got Project Warlock, which I haven't played yet, but it's like a high octane first person shooter. Trying to emulate the the kind of speed that that Doom 2016 and Brutal Doom have, so I'm looking forward to giving that a try. And I also got Strafe, which is another first person high octane shooter. Seeing a pattern here, maybe but, you're gonna have to spell it out. This time, it, this time it's a roguelike, not unlike Returnal. Oh, okay, all it's right. It's from Devolver Digital. It didn't get very good reviews at first, but it seems like it's had a bunch of major updates since. So I want to I want to see how it feels now. But the real thing that that got my attention was that the a new world ends with you game is on its way to the PS4 and Switch. I've been waiting so freaking long for that. 13 years to be exact. And just and yes, it is a sequel. Okay. But focused on different characters. With some of the old ones returning, but not the main ones. And it looks like it's not just limited to the Shibuya district this time. This time it's Shinjuku as well. And they're 
there are actually some new mechanics involved. Like you can have like an entire team of characters instead of just two, which is how the, the DS did things. Like you control one character on top of the screen and your other character on the bottom with the touch screen. And it looks like there's some time reversal mechanics to redo certain choices after a day has ended, which is a, a bit like Life is Strange, but at the same time not. And best of all, it comes out on July 27th of this year. Oh, how about that? So I'm, pre I'm pretty fucking hyped. As soon as it comes out, I'm dropping everything to play it. There was just... I just ran into a bit of a problem. Which version do I get? I mean, on the one hand, it'd be fun to play portably on the Switch to get a similar feeling to playing the original on the DS. And thus it would feel like a true continuation of the story that I love so much. But on the other hand... I'd probably get a more high-def experience on the PS4. But then I, I watched a side-by-side -side comparison video on YouTube, and it looks like they're pretty much identical in terms of definition, so I'm going to get the Switch version. So look forward to hearing about that, because it's a sequel to my all-time favorite game, so I'm going to be talking a lot about it. Very excited. Can't wait to hear it. Joey? Should be fun. I too bought a, a bunch of games on Steam Summer Sale, and uh, I got Outlast Two, and I played all of forty minutes of it so far. So that should tell you how much I've been gaming the last two weeks. <laughs> I think I played a little bit of Phasmophobia with a drunken session with friends, but nice. classic these days. Pretty much it. But I bought a bunch of like horror games, and I actually just bought one of the games on this podcast to see if I like it better with mouse and keyboard, which I think I might. But yeah, I. Probably ended up buying like 12 games. Ooh. So, oh, all man. for really cheap though. Has there been any major, has there been any major improvements or additives to Phasmophobia in the last few months? Yeah, the, the reason why I played again, they added two new ghosts and a new house. And the developer actually hired an artist and another dev to help them work on it. So, it was no longer a one man project. Oh, cool. I'll and the, the ghosts are way fresh. more aggressive. Like, since the last time we played, there's a lot of changes. So, like, the breakers start off when you do pro. So, you have to go find it, turn it on, and let the house warm up before you can use the thermometer. Oh, that's a cool little uh, feature. Yeah. So, yeah. Because yeah, why would the heat fun. be on in an abandoned house? <laughs> or if a ghost is haunting it. Yeah. There's a lot of cool interactions they can do with, like, stuffed animals. Um, there's. Uh, the Ouija board. There's a lot to it now. Like it's it's growing. It's very enjoyable with friends. Yeah, that's one of the one of the more interesting multiplayer games that's come out in the last few years. That and Fall Guys, which I kind of pick at every now and again. Just play a couple couple stages. It's goofy fun. So, so if you want to hop in a session of Phasmo, just hit me up. <laughs> Might have to do that. I'd be uh, I'd be very scared and useless though. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, all right. Shall we... Uh, man, do I have a America drop? Hmm. I guess Metal Gear Solid is pretty pretty America. Right? Sure. Yeah? Maybe? I mean, made in Japan, but very American-influenced. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll just play Metal Gear Solid. Okay, America, fuck yeah. Joey? Fuck yeah. Ready for the first one? Let's go. Let's do it. Freedom Fighters from IO Interactive and published by EA and uh, came out 2003 in North America and PAL. Is that, is that Europe? Yes, PAL is uh, the PAL is Europe. So it was not released in Japan and IO Interactive uh, are the Hitman people. Yeah. So this game, uh, the Ruskies start taking over the world and then they invade New York. And uh, whoa, whoa, you whoa. Are... really blowing the we're really burying the lead here. Come on. The plot is uh, they bombed the fuck out of Berlin. Uh, they won the yeah. Cold War. And now they... they're going into New York and we are a fucking the Mario Brothers over here. Yes. Yes. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. This is Mario Odyssey on crack. That's like. <laughs> 
<laughs> you're a plumber with an M on your hat, and you have to go through tunnels to go to other places. <laughs> but instead of saving the princess, you're saving your brother who happens to be in a green jumpsuit. So <laughs> what the hell's going on here? I never thought of it that way. That's awesome. <laughs> you didn't see it that way, Colin? Because that was, that was like immediately what came to mind. I was like, hold on. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, is this motherfucking Mario? Like, adult version? Like, <laughs> slumming it in the sewers? Like, what the hell? Colin, we're not kidding. You you go from, like, town to town, or area to area, through the sewers, and you have to go through the, the little pipe sewer parts of, like, New York to get to these other areas. <laughs> I, I played it. I just never made that connection, and I can't believe I didn't. <laughs> Oh man! So there's a lot to like about this game, but I kind of wish some... there was a Max Payne type upgrade where you're eating mushrooms and that get, gets everything to slow down. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if someone modded it to make it look like Mario. That would be great. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so the Soviet Union is fucking up New York City, and you are uh, Christopher Stone, a plumber. <laughs> you should have been Mario Stone. <laughs> I don't know why he had an M on his hat. To be Mario. He wants to be Mario. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. By the but way, they, America fu- best America fuck yeah name, Chris Stone. It's pretty cool. Christopher Stone. <laughs> Hardworking plumber. Now freedom fighter. Right. Leader of the rebels. <laughs> okay, I keep interrupting you guys. Go for it. <laughs> uh, I mean, this game has a lot to like, but the one thing I really hate about it is the controls. Like... Aiming down scope by pressing L3 just is not intuitive, and I hate it. And it felt like you can, didn't have to aim when shooting. You just, like, spray, and enemies magically started dying. Um, but I like the charisma system, where you can then get more people to follow you. Uh, I like the Mario aspect of going through the sewers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think the story is interesting. I just didn't like that it was very railroady. Like it was kind of like, oh, you're in New York, but you can only go down these alleys. Like, I I, I kind of get it though. Yeah, and limitations and whatnot, but it it's not bad. And I actually just bought it on Steam because I'm gonna try it with mouse and keyboard because I think I might like it better. Because I just the aiming is what turned me off for it. Everything else I liked about it. Uh, the split. I've actually played the split screen in the in the past, where it's uh, you know, f- uh, four friends going against against each other, and then you can also have a sort of um, uh, a, a team system going on there, which is kind of cool. Uh, you can have like eight soldiers <laughs> follow you, I believe. So if you want to play the split screen, that's a really fun aspect to this game. Um, as for the the team aspect is very interesting because because the only game before this that I could think of that did it was Rainbow Six. Uh, however, this game definitely felt like it was more arcadey, which I generally enjoyed more because if you're not gonna ha- it, it, so I think the more what they wanted to focus on was the the group the 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 group really going against all of the evil Russians in the streets and blowing up cars, which, by the way, is a huge aspect of this game, is just making those cars go pop really hard. Um, all the different, like, Molotov cocktails and, combina- and weapon combinations was good. And your ability to just kind of get, like, up to 10, 12 people, or however many it was, uh, where you can follow, attack, defend. It's very sim- simplistic, but I think it does really d- does it really well, because the, the AI... I'd be interested to see this game this game with modern, you know, technology capabilities with follow attack defend maybe you can kind of point them in right directions and whatnot but the ai by itself just kind of governing themselves just based on one of your three little attacks i think did pretty good especially considering it's 2003 uh in that aspect it was really really neat to see what what they are able to accomplish of the era the game looks pretty good too can i thought it yeah the 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 uh, control aims definitely felt spray but I think that's what they were kind of going for. That's what they chose to go for and concentrate on uh, many other aspects of the game to make it different than, say, a a SOCOM or a would be another example, a Medal of Honor type situation. I think I think this game did a good job separating itself from there. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised. Now, 
can we make fun of this game all day? Absolutely. <laughs> the 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 plot is ridiculous. <laughs> Colin, Those damn Ruskies. Yeah, what'd you think, Colin? On the first twenty minutes, I was having a a bunch of flashbacks to Command and Conquer Red Alert. Probably just because of the, the Soviet Army and a little bit of the the division as well. Even though I never played that, and playing it, I was also getting Evil Dead Fistful of Boomstick flashbacks. But. Yeah, the division's a very good modern example of freedom fighters, uh, for sure. Just with less uh, microtransaction bullshit going on. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny. You Actually, the, I'll the I'll cut you off right there. That is what I wanted the, the like this freedom fighter is what I wanted the the division to be. Yeah, if you can combine the two, take the best of both, you can probably have a really good game. Yes, yes. Thank you, Colin. That is that is a fantastic. Uh, comparison there. You're absolutely right, because I remember when The Division was coming out, and that was super interesting. So I'm not usually a uh, a shooty pop-pop kind of game guy, but that looked, that really piqued my interest, and then when it first came out, and how it just how it just fell so hard from my interest, Freedom Fighters has a lot of those aspects, especially from the base level, that I think Joey's right there, just saying, just combine the two's elements, and you got a really good game. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, felt the gameplay felt kind of bare bones. Mm -hmm. Although the ability to recruit allies in firefights was definitely interesting. I found the I found the crouch mechanics annoying. And keep in mind, I played this on the GameCube, and. <laughs> I was just going to say, I found it funny when you guys made the Mario comparison, and I played it on a Nintendo console, so <laughs> that's pretty funny. But yeah, the I found the crouch mechanics annoying because you had to hold the hold down on the D-pad the entire time to stay crouched. Mm -hmm. And God help you if you try shooting while crouched. And the, the shooting mechanics were a bit annoying with how the back of your character's head tends to block your view a lot when manual aiming. I mean, I get this is from the days before Resident Evil 4, but it, it's still kind of a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has, it has the bad camera angles from that era. Yeah, but I, I did like the auto reload. Just whenever you stop shooting for a little while, your character will automatically put another clip in. And I, I found all the back and forth in the first level really annoying because first you go to the police station to get some C4, then you go all the way back to, to the sewer you came from and go to the gas station to blow up the sniper's nest. Then you go all the way back to the place where you got the C4 to advance and yada, yada, yada. And it's also really annoying that when you die, you start all the way back at the beginning of the level you're on. No checkpoints or anything. Checkpoints are for pussies. There's no checkpoints of freedom. That's right. <laughs> you can't shortcut freedom. <laughs> no, uh, check checkpoint systems uh, would come later in modern games <laughs> when you could actually like just load wherever and whenever. <laughs> at least with games like this. Okay. Glad the environments are at least unique enough that you know where you are and where you're going. Sometimes the scenery blends together, but overall it's it's decent enough to know where you're where you are. Although that said, the insides of buildings tend to be pretty bare bones in ten, terms of visuals. Yeah, that's a that's unfortunately a product of the era. Yeah, it goes with a lot of those games. But yeah, overall I I didn't hate this game. I I give it a pass. Pass. I'm gonna give it a soft pass. Yeah. I, I mean, I like everything. I think I'm like it better on Steam, but the aiming is just, just bad enough. So the game goes for about ten bucks on all consoles. Very affordable, and it runs about nine and a half hours. I only played like a couple because uh, it gets a little wary uh, pretty quick. Very repetitive. Okay, Joey, next oh, pick. The next game. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, American <laughs> Gladiators. On you should a, be. On the Nintendo. Came out in 1991. Uh, incredible Technologies developed it and Game Tech published it. Holy shit, this game sucks. 
It's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is going on? It. The joust I thought was impossible until I realized he can do high and low hits. Yes, that's very important to know. <laughs> very stupid. Um, the wall climb is a nightmare because if you go one section off, you fall to the ground. Like there's no stopping it. Yeah, but then you, you have these super fast gladiators coming after you, so you can't go slow, but you can't <laughs> go too fast. So it, like, I don't know. That one was terrible. The human cannonball is trash. Like. Sometimes you hit them and their shield doesn't do anything. Other times they just bounce you right off. Like, if you don't hit them right, it's done. Powerball's not bad. And Assault was pretty easy. But this game just sucks. Did you play the Eliminator? I, that is the most important part and most important question. No, I don't think I played it. You had to beat the other ones to get to it? Or was it on screen? I didn't see it. Yeah, you got to beat them. No, I didn't beat all of them because <laughs> I couldn't beat the wall climb. So I threw this game in an emulator just so I could get to the Eliminator. Because <laughs> I'm not going to play an American Gladiators game and not play the fucking Eliminator, which, by the way, is is Fall Guys. It's the original. It's the original Fall Guys. The American Gladiators <laughs> Eliminator course. <laughs> right? Yeah. Don't forget. Don't forget Takeshi's Castle. Well, I mean, pff, yeah. But, uh, okay, so follow-up question. Colin, this is a weird one, but uh, did you ever have American Gladiators in Canada? Or did you have Canadian Gladiators? <laughs> no, we did not. I never got to see many American Gladiators episodes. I mean, I knew it existed, but only okay. ever once or twice did I ever get to see, like, the tail end of an episode, like, when they're when they're doing the eliminator as you said mm -hmm. but it's really too bad i would have loved the hell out of this show if i had access to it adult How aggro craig <laughs> yeah you got Seems names like laser and nitro the game <laughs> yeah. this, this was like pure like Lace. 90s awesomeness <laughs> yeah the... storm havoc <laughs> seemed to only be on cable channels and my family didn't have cable Oh, dude, I loved this show as a kid. I watched the fuck out of it. That and Guts. Like, it was, it was Kids yeah, American Gladiators. Just, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So every and game mode um, finds a way to suck <laughs> or be too easy. Uh -huh. So I I made sure to play the Eliminator, which is an obstacle course where you have... Uh, where you have uh, so everything's in 2D, left to right, and the left side of the screen will come at you. And there's also a, uh, a countdown timer. Uh, there's platforms you jump to, up, down, left, right. It's very finicky. And then uh, the the next stage would be these uh, conveyor belts that move, make you move fast or backwards or whatever. Not too hard. Uh, then there's the hand cycle, the hand bike uh, that you go to. Yeah. Um, and after that is uh, a multi multitude of zip lines that you have to time letting go to get to the next zip line at the right time and it gets faster and faster on the way down. So that's the whole course. This is deemed almost impossible because all while you're doing precision jumping and precision timing, uh, there's just like the American Gladiator show, these dudes will try to pelt you with balls during this entire time. And if you fall, you go back to the previous section uh, start and you lose 10 seconds off the clock. And uh, I did not beat it. It is very difficult. <laughs> and it's not all that fun, unfortunately. Uh, could they make a modern-day American Gladiators game and make it, like, super fun multiplayer stuff? Absolutely. But in uh, 1991, <laughs> with all of its limitations and made shittily? Uh, no. This game sucks. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm definitely failing the shit out of this uh, game. The wall climb uh, would be fun, but if, you, if you're if you a... You have to be so pre precise with not hitting the giant black squares, plus the gladiators are super yeah. fast. That was the hardest one. The joust is just switch between high and low, and you'll win every time. Uh, Although I find going high most of the time just guarantees you to win. At least for me, every time I went high, they couldn't really block it, so I just went high. Yeah, I just and smashed switched. it. Yeah, I just switched between the two, and they lost. So, the assault was super easy. The balls just come at you too slow, so it's just 
no no problem at all. And the uh, which one am I missing? Uh, human cannibal. You just got to time right. That's all it is. Not hard. And, and Powerball. Powerball was probably the most fun, but it was also the most annoying. I save stated the shit out of that because trying to get them all with three dudes that are faster than you coming at you, which I guess in the sense of American Gladiators, I guess that makes sense, but it makes for a bad game. <laughs> yeah, I think I only got four out of five, but it was good enough. Yeah. Um, yeah, game sucks. Colin, you agree? More or less. I mean... I found, yeah, and like you guys said in the Joust event, the hit detection is really finicky. I mean, it's it's trying to it's frustrating trying to figure out where it was safe to stand and where it wasn't. Although I found the scream that you hear when one of them falls was pretty funny. It was like a fucking contra death. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and yeah, the wall climbing was really frustrating because. We got to mention to the audience the way you play that is you move by alternately pressing A and B to move each arm and leg and you use the D pad to determine your direction. But I, bet I could get the yeah, like American you... Gladiators theme going here in the background. <laughs> yeah, it's frustrating. If you fall and you hit an empty spot or block, you have to start all over again. It's made even harder by the two other opponents climbing up after you. As soon as they touch you, you fall. And yeah, I, I kind of like the human cannonball. I mean, sure, it's hard to, it's kind of hard to figure out where to get the, how to time your jumps and letting go of the rope to swing into the enemy guy. But there's, there's still enough of a challenge that is decently fun. Power. I found Powerball frustrating because those those assholes are on you like white on rice, even when you don't have the ball. <laughs> yeah. Salt was basically just like a generic top-down shooter mini game. That was my favorite on the TV show. Was Assault, the fucking jacked-up dudes with a fucking tennis ball cannon, just pelting you. <laughs> I love watching dudes just get hit in the face. <laughs> yeah, that would have been fun. But I'm, I think I'm, uh, I'm being a little softer on this one than you guys, and giving it a very soft pass. I mean, it's not something I'll go back to, but I'd probably have played the hell out of it as a kid. I just, I don't hate it as an adult. It's, it's just harmless. All right. I guess uh, two fails and a pass. And that was the entire American Gladiators theme song played in the background of all that. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Uh, all right, I'll do Kay's pick and my pick. Kay, uh, for those that are joining us for the first time, uh, we have a ghost pick from another member of the podcast, a uh, little proper here that we have at Ridley Pritchardcast. His name's Kay, does wrestling one with me. He chose Madden 2004. Because uh, what's more America than football? Football, American football. <laughs> So I asked him, why 2004? Why not, like, pick the original or, you know, something from the mid-90s? He goes, well, 2004 was the one he has the most uh, nostalgia with. And it's re it's uh, when you look into it a little bit more, it's kind of regarded as one of the best Madden games of all time. Um, it also is famous for having Michael Vick in it. Do you guys remember Michael yeah. Vick? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he seems to be the Mario Lemieux of this game. As he in is in Bo NHL Jackson, 94. baby. <laughs> 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 he is uh, he is an OP character. The fuck, uh, he's got a ninety five speed rating. He's faster than like anybody in the game. He's straight up Bo Jackson from Tecmo Football. <laughs> uh, there is a uh, yeah. Uh, there, there. <laughs> so they added elements to the game specifically in two four. 2004 to stop Michael Vick. So that's kind of ah. where the, the, the Superman hit stick comes from. <laughs> so you could leap and get him. But that also creates, that's funny. yeah, that, that unfortunately also creates a lot of defensive issues where uh, players can just NFL blitz your ass up the middle all day. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but I was like, man, why is it super annoying to run the ball? Like you just can't do it. 
Yeah, you can't. And uh, defense sucks when you're playing it. Yes. Because they're fast, fast than you getting it off. So when you blitz, they're like, oh, first down. You're like, God damn it. Yeah, you have, uh, you have no choice. Where the game uh, gets probably its most prestige is its franchise mode. Uh, and this is you saw this with a lot of sports games starting about 2004, where uh, you hit you can do your fantasy draft. You can do um, you basically have all the responsibilities of running the entire team from, you know, uh, uh, concessions, ticket prices, uh, hiring and firing coaching staffs. You can relocate the team. And there's also training camp modes. So a lot of kind of the basics of what made franchise modes super fun in sports games. Uh, was kind of started and refined in 2004. And unfortunately, where a lot of fans of sports franchises have lost interest in the games are these franchise modes just keep getting less and less interesting. Uh, I think the only one left over from this kind of concept is the MLB franchises. Uh and I and and when I was kind of thinking about it more, I was like, man, the most fun I had in sports games was kind of a a fantasy draft where you can do a franchise mode over multiple seasons with friends, where each of your friends has their own team, everyone's picking them, and you can you can play again you can play against each other or simulate or what have you, and then it just keeps continuing on through the draft, and you can trade and fire players and coaches, uh, whatnot accordingly, and that whole. That idea is just has just been replaced with the ultimate team modes that were started in FIFA and microtransactions. That's where all of the development goes, and it's really taken the spirit and interest into uh, out of uh, what made these sports games just so just so popular, and and people playing against each other. It's just the same thing over and over again uh, with the microtransactions these days. And it's kind of been that way for the last decade. So the the the, the mid two thousands was, uh, I think, the, kind of the best era of sports games. You guys uh, understand? I know. I I don't think Colin, you played a lot of sports games, but Joey, you and I played the fuck out of games during this era. Uh, I wouldn't say. Well, it depends. The mid two thousands has some good ones, but I think. NCAA football 14, the last one before they couldn't make any more, might be one of the best football games out there. Mm-hmm. I think NCAA took over. Like when Madden started being bad, NCAA started becoming better. But that makes sense. I think if it existed today, it'd probably be the exact same thing as Madden, though, with microtransactions. Yeah. The. Uh... Yeah, well, the NCAA games uh, making a return, so we'll see if they go that route. I pretty much guarantee they will. <laughs> um, but I think the training camp mode is very underrated because if you're in franchise mode and you get a rookie or you have a player in his prime, doing the 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 fun little mini games can you can increase their stats by doing these things and uh it kind of gets you invested in the players that you're training and going into games with. So you can get like LaDainian, LaDainian Tom Tomlinson from like a 95 to a 97. It makes him that much better of a player. Yeah. Uh, for, for me, who's not a big football guy, uh, especially not a football game guy. Uh, this just kind of reiterated how much is, how much just has gone missing and been depleted over the last decade plus in these sports franchises. That's what I took away from playing Madden 2004. Uh, sure, it's still a little bit arcadey, but that was the era. Didn't doesn't have kind of the dynamic running and hit sticks so, and and you know hitting or whatnot uh, that modern games can put into it. But at its at its uh, core and what the games was able to do in 2004, this was really good. I pass Madden 2004. I'm gonna fail it because I didn't like the graphics. Oh, I mean, come on, <laughs> it just felt so stiff. I know it has so many great things about it, but like, I think it's like a double-edged sword. Like the games got better, but they also had worse features. So you got to find like that that middle ground somewhere where you can find a game and play. Um, 
So I think like now the graphics are way better and the controls are way better. If we can get that with the modes and how this game was, it would be a perfect combination. But playing back, I'd rather play a newer one, even if I can just ignore all the transactions or just not even play Madden and just pick up an old copy of NCAA. So I'm Probably. a fail it. I don't think it's a bad game, but I just didn't enjoy it. Well, that's the other thing about sports games. It has to be this super special game uh, that, you know, it's it's not everything's going to be like uh, NHL 94, where it just stands the test of time with it, with its uh, gameplay and with what made it special. That's where these mid-2000 games falter off. So I don't disagree with you, Joey. Yeah, it just it's like the training camp. It's good, but it, it gets way better when you actually have like actual players in it in modern games like when you're just throwing to dummies it's kind of boring but it was nice that they added it um there's a lot of good things but i just i think it falls short on the graphics and it's just a little too stiff to for me to pass it yeah i went in, i went in, so you went into it sounding like a 2021 mind i kind of put myself more in 2004 the two different perspectives which i think is fair Colin, do you have much to add or because we know you're not a sports guy? Colin? Never really played any of the Madden series. And for that matter, I just plain don't give a crap about American football. As in the game, <laughs> that's <me> not, <laughs> as in the game, that's not soccer. <laughs> I'll go to a Toronto Argos game if somebody invites me. But other than that, I have zero fucks to give about this particular sport. I'll stick with hockey. Thank you very much. Yeah, maybe next time we'll play a hockey game. It's way more, be- way more better. <laughs> yeah, way more better. Yeah, you heard me. Uh, according to Wikipedia, yeah. uh, there was a lot of players in this particular year that just weren't a part of the NFL union, so they just weren't in the game. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. I I did watch like a retrospective video about this one, and seems like there's a lot in it to like if you're into this sort of game. I mean. There's even a football 101 mode for people like me who don't know the first thing about the sport. John Madden himself even voices over it, so that's pretty cool. Oh, that's kind of cool. And the graphics look pretty good. I mean, I also like that you can play in different weather conditions like rain or snow. Just all those kinds of details are kind of, they're pretty cool. I mean... For what it is, I'll give it a pass. I mean, it's not my kind of game, but I recognize quality when I see it, so it gets a pass from me. Okay. Well, I mean, it's a sports game from the past who goes like a couple bucks. <laughs> yeah, I, I only I only had to pay three bucks for my copy. Yeah, it's they're 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 not expensive. All right. So the next one is my oh. Yeah, I, I said I passed it. Uh, the next one is my pick. It's International Track and Field 2000, developed and published by Konami. It came out on basically everything <laughs> of the time. Uh, it, you guessed it. It came out in uh, the summer of 2000. Uh, uh, North America, it was uh, fall of 99. That was the earliest one. It is the Olympic track and field game. Uh, where you have just a bunch of mini games, try to beat world records. You have a slew of competitions to choose from. Uh, for those that don't remember, the Olympics in 2000 took place in Sydney, Australia. <laughs> so uh, there you go. And Joey and I played the fuck out of this game and sucked at it. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I, I, I didn't realize it until I started playing. I'm like, this is so familiar. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. Sucked back then, sucks now. It's really bad. <laughs> It's 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 horrible. The controls in every single game is terrible. It's impossible. <laughs> Button mash. I rage quit in this game. Like I just stopped playing after like five minutes. Like I'm I'm like fuck it. I hate it. I hate this game so much. <laughs> I just went through I all the different modes, and they're every single competition's impossible. Every single one. <laughs> uh, this is how you play. You hit square and circle. In in uh. Uh, back and forth as hard as you can in every single one and then occasionally depending on which one you are you hit x to i don't know throw a javelin uh jump uh throw the shot put throw the discus whatever the problem is you can never 
no matter how good you are, even with like a pen or doing anything with the square and circle, you'll never be fast enough to beat anything. Get first. Uh, if it's on anything other than easy mode, you might get second. <laughs> and uh, the the because it's from this era, the the timing is just so impossible that you'll never get good at it ever. The let's see the uh, the kayak race, the canoe race, or whatever it is, uh, that's impossible because you just get tired and the computer will always pass you up. Uh, same thing with track. The triple jump's like next to impossible from getting anything because you also have to land it right, which you'll never time correctly. Uh, and this, the swimming, you have to start slow or you get faulted, so you can never be perfect on the start. Right. You'll never be good. Uh, the hammer throw, you'll be lucky to not hit the cage nine out of ten times. <laughs> the fucking fence. Um, Colin, did you play this game? <laughs> Could not find a copy of it anywhere. Consider yourself lucky. I just watched, I watched a long play of it. On a side note, I find it funny that for this cast we chose more sports games than military games for America. Fuck yeah. <laughs> well, I mean the, the Olympics. Opposite. Yeah, the Olympics is going on. Uh, it's supposed to go on this summer now uh, after the delay. Uh, what's what's more America than the Olympics? Because we win all the medals most of the time. Win the most every time. <laughs> Uh, that's why I chose it. I think it speaks for itself. The game's like five bucks on PlayStation. Yeah, but I still couldn't find a, a copy of it. So yeah, uh, closest I have played in real life was uh, to a more modern track and field game is Summer Games on the Commodore sixty four. <laughs> Don't think I ever really managed to. Did figure you just that say more out. modern since the Commodore sixty four game? <laughs> Hey, I said the closest. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't think I ever really figured that one out. And some of the games, like gymnastics, didn't load at all, but it was fun all the same. I when on the long play I was watching, the guy would sometimes have an actual superhero athlete. <laughs> That was pretty funny. He'll even fly around the stadium when you win. It sounds like he modded it. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Or maybe there's just something I never noticed in the game. <laughs> game yeah, sucks. Could be a cheat. Uh, and I like that. I like that Canada is the first choice of country in the customization menu. Well, those... I know it's alphabetical, yeah. but still. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. I mean, the music isn't too bad, and the graphics are decent for the time, but if what you guys say is true about the controls, I'm I'm going to fail it. Hard fail. Super yeah, hard. I played the, the Nintendo 64 version just because we don't play a lot of Nintendo 64 games, and I fail this. I fail this every day. I bet it's even hate worse it. because of the graphics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Colin, your game pick. Hell yeah. Metal Wolf Chaos for the Xbox. Developed and published by From Software and <laughs> localized by Devolver Digital in the West. Released on the Xbox in Japan on December 22nd, 2004, and later worldwide on PC, PS4, and Xbox One on August 6, 2019. And keep in mind that at the time, From Software was known for the Armored Core series, hence, this one is a mecha game. It's good stuff. Plot's fairly straightforward. In the not too distant future, oh, the is USA it? is in <laughs> <laughs> the USA is in disarray, which the vice president of the time takes advantage of to lead the U.S. military in a coup d'état. The president, however, isn't taking this lying down, so he gets into a secretly developed mech and starts flying around the country to <laughs> take territory back from the VP. And like we said before, it's hilarious that the most over-the-top American patriotic game of the cast is a game made in Japan. Hideo Kojima would be proud. Damn right. <laughs> ja this, Japanese exclusive. <laughs> this is America fuck yeah. Like, this is Damn the right. essence of it. <laughs> yeah. Appar I actually, on Wikipedia, it says it was apparently made to boost sales of the Xbox in Japan, which are notoriously low even to this day. <laughs> That's hysterical that <laughs> they made an yeah, American really. satire game 
that didn't <laughs> release in America because you know I think I think this game would have sold well, and they even remade it in today's world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I bought the the version of the PS4 version on PSN to play it. The XD, yeah, I bought it on Steam. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is another one of those run around and blow shit up types of games. It almost feels like a precursor to the Just Cause series, just with a mech suit. <laughs> I thought this was like campy Zone of Enders. That's how I took it. Yeah, I haven't played that one. Okay. It reminds me a lot of Earth Defense Force. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. For those who are wondering, From Software is indeed the fucking Bloodborne people. <laughs> and Dark Souls. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, there's. Yeah, in this game, there's like upgrade mechanics that encourage you to blow as much military shit up as possible in order to rack up money and rare metals to put into research and development of better weaponry. The more rare metals you get, the more guns you can manufacture and get more powerful stuff to blow more shit up. Just run around various cities, freeing hostages, blowing up tanks, blowing up turret towers and radar jamming towers and just all with some of the most ridiculous dialogue you've ever heard just along with satirization of networks like cnn oh which yeah they call dnn in this one ramp it throughout the game and the president's ca- talking to his secretary the whole time she always sounds so smugly gleeful whenever she speaks like she's enjoying the hell out of everything no matter what happens Especially the explosions. I now, love the, the, the unintentional action. political messages that are very relatable to today, where it's yeah. Michael Wilson's the president. He's a relative of Woodrow Wilson, the 47th president, yeah. right? So that implies yeah. that only people of like high money can ever become president, which is mostly true. Uh, the vice president is Richard Hawk. So now we have the biggest <laughs> question, guys. Of this podcast, yeah. of the games we played, who has the best America fuck yeah name? Is it Richard Hawk? Is it, uh, what was the Freedom Fighters name guy? Uh, Christopher Stone. Chris Stone. American Gladiators <laughs> Nitro. <laughs> <laughs> or what was it, Blaze? No, it was, I don't know. I think it was Laser, wasn't it? Or am I, I, or am I thinking of Dodgeball at this point? <laughs> blazer i know nitro was one of them so that's the one that stuck out so yeah. we got turbo so we got, was i think another turbo okay we'll go with turbo so we got turbo chris stone uh or richard hawk or michael vick with... how about that <laughs> we'll throw him in there i'm gonna have to go with dick hawk <laughs> i'll go with christopher stone oh my god joey you convinced me dick hawk america fuck yeah two, <laughs> two out of three votes for dick hawk I gotta write that down. That's all I'm gonna put in the uh, in the little uh, front title is Dick Hawk. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> I like the dialogue where he's like, "What does my schedule look like?" Oh, you have a meeting with Japan for some environment thing. Tell them I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> like, <laughs> Too busy saving my country. <laughs> <laughs> Too busy blowing shit up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the irony of this game is just incredible that the best, I mean, do we all agree this was the best game of the cast? Yes. Yeah, it's not close, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. The the best game of the cast is a Japanese exclusive game that's a satire on America and it's the most America fuck yeah, and it's the best one. Uh, it's crazy. All that's missing is that the characters be marionettes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I yeah. really like the uh, the mechanic of switching between all the weapons in the game. You can actually see the animation of it changing on the mech. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I kind of wish that that was implemented a little better. Like, you'd hold down the circle button to cycle through your weapons, and then as soon as you let go, your weapons go back in, and then you fire. I just... Because the way it works in its current form is that you press the button once... The weapons come out, you switch through them, and then you have to press the button again. I'd really rather you just hold down the button, but that's, I guess that's more of a nitpick. I, 
One of my issues is that the target buildings take a while to destroy. I mean, maybe I just have bad weapons, but it takes like at least a minute to destroy one like turret tower. Yeah, with, like, I found I, yeah, yeah, I found that too where you really have to because there's so many different unique weapons in the game, you kind of have to find the right one to destroy the right thing. And there's a lot of trial and error there of which one does the most damage. And the thing is, you don't want to use your most powerful ones because you got to save those for kind of the tougher enemies or some boss or something that's going to come later. Yeah. Yeah. I blew everything up with the bazooka. Yeah, it's a good Same. go-to. Good go-to. You, one of the other things you can do to like just plow through buildings is you've got like a a little jet boost mechanic that acts as sort of a a dodge type deal, but you can also like plow through barricades and buildings and all that stuff and knock foot soldiers around. And you just, just running around, firing every which way, blow up fire escapes that you've got soldiers firing from, and then you blow up cages filled with hostages somehow the hostages don't get hurt at all <laughs> yeah well i had to i had yeah. to emulate the game because the game is well it's a japanese exclusive so that kind of says a lot right there but it's also loose 107 dollars <laughs> holy shit yeah what yeah it's a it's a it's an expensive xbox game it's one of the one of the few out there it's, um, yeah, you, I mean, it takes like a, it's like a 10 hour game. So it's, it's pretty decent too. On top of that, good, a good amount of time for a mech blow up arcadey type experience. Yeah. Yeah. Easy pass. I think so as well. Easy pass. But yeah, definitely passing it. All right. So our five games were freedom fighters on the PS2 and the GameCube, maybe. Ah, whatever. American Gladiators on the NES, Madden 2004, International Track and Field 2000, and Metal Wolf Chaos on the Xbox. Colin, your favorite and least favorite. That should be pretty obvious. Favorite, Metal Wolf Chaos. Mm -hmm. Least favorite, International Track and Field. And for my tears, in no particular order... Uh, American Gladiators gets a C. Freedom Fighters, C. Metal Wolf Chaos, A. International Track and Field, F. And Madden, I'll also give an A. Hmm, just okay. for what it is. All right. Uh, I will go next. Metal Wolf Chaos, favorite, least favorite. I'm going to I'm going to give a push tie American Gladiators and Track and Field 2000. I don't think we've ever done that before, but honestly, I can't tell which one's worse for its era. <laughs> and uh American Gladiators and Track and Field both get Fs. I'm like fuck both those games <laughs> so hard. Madden 2004. I will give it a an A. I will give Metal Wolf Chaos an A and Freedom Fighters I'll give a B. Joey, your theme, your last. Metal Wolf Chaos is the best. Uh, between American Gladiators and International Track and Field, I think International Track and Field is worse, so I'm going to make that one the worst. Well, at least you can kind of win some of the events in American Gladiators. <laughs> uh, Freedom Fighters, I'm going to give it a C. Uh, American Gladiators, I'm going to give it an F. Um, Madden, even though I failed it, I'll give it a B. Uh, International Track and Field, I'll give it an F. And Metal Wolf Chaos, an A. All right, so that comes out to... Freedom Fighters goes down to a C. You still sticking with that C on American Gladiators, Colin? Yeah. All right. I'm going against the grain here. All right, so that's a D for American Gladiators. Madden gets an A. Track and Field gets an F, our first F game in a while. And <laughs> Metal Wolf Chaos gets an A. So two A's, an F, and a D, and a C. Uh, I think International Track and Field might be the worst game we've played all year. Maybe even of last year too. Uh, I, have to back, I have to look back at the worst games last year to see. Yeah, I'll have to. Yeah, I'll have to see the tier list. But I, there was that wrestling. That was that WWF Game Boy game that we played. 
You know, let me pull it. Let me let me take a look at the uh, the tiers here we got going on for our, uh, since it is the halfway through the year. Uh, we have three F's on the year: Magic, the WWF Game Boy Advance game, no Game Boy Color game, and then it looks oh, to be yeah. one of the Simpsons games that we played. Yeah, it looks like a Simpsons arcade game. Yeah. I well, think it was, it was Simpson Arcade <laughs> on console, not the arcade itself. Right, 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 right. Because yeah, the arcade yeah. game is amazing. Yeah. Whatever console, what that stupid console that had the arcade games. Yeah, you're absolutely was, right. It's terrible. Uh, who? Yeah, this is some stiff competition, but I think Track and Field might be the worst. I don't know. I'm still learning towards the WWF Game Boy Color game. Yeah, I think I'm sticking with that one, but. Track and field, at least you and I could play it together, Joey, and just have stupid fun with it. That's, I guess, its only redeeming quality. <laughs> but then again, we were also kids, and it was kind of like one of our few games. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that does it for this podcast. It's uh, our next theme pick is from Kay, and he picked the theme of death. <laughs> so we're going from America to death. <laughs> I guess, I guess, kind of doesn't uh, that usually follow America? Fuck yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, a lot of a lot of terrorism involved a lot of the times. I mean, we went from manly America, fuck yeah, death. It makes sense. You're right. <laughs> You're right. Unfortunately, it does how that does uh how it works. Yeah, and Persona Three is going to be part of that. So that's uh that's one game that we'll be picking on it. And that's our next podcast in a couple of weeks, and then we gotta we gotta pick uh, four more themes after that. So, guys, it's been fun. See you next time. Bye. Bye now. <laughs>